we're going to kick this video off by spending just a little bit more time with the high poly. I want to make sure all my wrinkles are blocked in throughout the whole mesh. There's some spots that are missing. When I'm done here, everything will be approximated and all I'll have left is, is polish on the high poly. I'll be able to get my bakes done though from this and they'll look, they'll look pretty close to what the finals would be. Something important to note, I didn't really do uh, a real retopology phase. All the remeshing was done using Z Remesher for the parts I created. And I pretty much used the same topology that came with the base the base mail scan. So you're just going to see me jump from messing with the high poly here into UV unwrapping more or less. Just getting some last minute wrinkles in there. We're in Maya now, we're UV unwrapping. I didn't do anything special. I did all my UV unwrapping in Maya. All the accessories are on a sheet together. The body's on its own sheet. The head's on its own sheet. Cowl, I believe is on its own sheet. Then I took that mesh, there are those meshes. I got them into Substance Painter. I just did a base pass of materials and a set of bakes so that way I could get a marmoset scene started. So I got my leathers where I needed them, my metals, my spandex, my rubber for the cowl. Just a quick skin. Nothing's really tuned. I just want to get my materials hooked up in marmoset so that way when I start exporting everything just updates very, very quickly. So now I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the face. So I'm only gonna be working uh, from the tip of the nose up. Anything you don't see, I'm basically not gonna work on. I'm gonna give him a bit firmer of a chin, pop some detail and add the pores and call it a day. Here you can see me just touching up the face a little bit, getting things to read a little bit better. I'm gonna make sure that chin feels strong. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my pores going. I'm gonna take the pores from this mesh and I'm gonna transfer them to the Space Ghost head. Then I'm going to use a custom pour brush that I made to pop in all the individual pours, and that's really gonna help the piece sing. First, I need to line the two meshes. So you can see here, I've wrapped the female to the male. And I'm gonna go ahead and transfer the pore detail. I can go into this process in depth in a separate video. I know that that all looked very magical and quick. This is just sort of an overview. This is a very quick way to get pores by just taking them from one mesh and projecting them onto another, cleaning it up, and then going in and adding your own custom individual pores with a brush. And I'm just hand placing pores. That's all I'm doing here. And I'm trying to pick out where I see the individual pores are from the pores that I stole from the other mesh.
you can see the result is pretty nice. Now I'm going to do here is set up an environment for me to render Space Ghost. I'm really just following a tutorial that I found from ArtStation. I can put that as a link in the description. Now we've jumped into Marvelous because this is where I spent some time on the cape. The majority of the cape was done in Marvelous. I just made a quick shape, pinned some, pinned some stuff into place and ran a simulation really. I did further touch ups of the silhouette inside of ZBrush. I did not do them in Marvelous, but Marvelous probably took me about 90% of the way. I'm trying to get that feeling that there's a little bit of wind blowing. And you can see here the final cape result after me touching it up in ZBrush. It looks really nice. It feels like it's it's billowing blowing in the wind. And that's it for this part of Space Ghost, part three. Look out for part four. Until next time, peace.